And welcome everybody to the West Gym atop Burnaby Mountain. Howard Samura here, your play-by-play -play announcer. It's GNAC men's basketball night here at Simon Fraser University. The host, Red Leafs, set to play host to Seattle Pacific, the Falcons. And Simon Fraser under head coach Steve Hansen, of course, still looking for that elusive first win of the GNAC conference season. Simon Fraser today coming in with a 5-8 overall record, but 0-3 in the conference. And uh, a couple of uh, losses on the road prior to New Year's Day, December the 29th at St. Martin's, falling 94 to 81. And then on New Year's Eve at Western Oregon, dropping a 79-67 decision to the host Wolves. So Simon Fraser, of course, coming off of that home uh, GNAC loss here to Western Washington, sporting that 0-3 record, smarting a bit with that one and really wanting to get off the schneid tonight, wanting to pick up that first W of the GNAC season. And they'll try to do it against the Seattle Pacific team that comes in with an 8-5 record. They're 3-1 and one in the conference. Uh, and they've had some encouraging results. Currently, as Simon Fraser sits with an 0-3 record, Seattle Pacific has won their last three straight in the conference. And they've beaten some quality opposition along the way. That winning streak starting on December the 3rd as they finished off their northern uh, travels to the state of Alaska, beating the Anchorage Seawolves 90-87, a three-point a victory there for the Falcons and they parlayed that into another couple of wins this past week. December the 29th coming home to open their GNAC campaign at Brome Pavilion uh, with a 76 to 69 win over Northwest Nazarene and Central Washington uh, in town uh, a couple nights later on, on New Year's Eve and Seattle Pacific again coming away with the victory there 93 to 84. The big story has been Sean Anderson or Shaw Anderson, excuse me, and he's been terrific for this team thus far uh, in the campaign. The uh, performances by Anderson against Nazarene and Central Washington uh, in the first game, 17 points and eight rebounds. And as well, uh, coming through with a 20.6 rebound effort in the victory over Central Washington. So we'll be calling his name a lot uh, He'll be uh, coming into the game wearing number 24. He's a 6'6", uh, junior forward at Kelso, Washington. Uh, in 13 games, uh, started all 13 of them and has averaged a team leading 32.9 minutes per game for Seattle Pacific. The Falcons uh, coming in here as a tough opening foe as Simon Fraser will continue their homestand here uh, this Saturday. And they will take on uh, Montana State Billings in a 7 p.m. contest here at the West Gym. $500 paper airplane contest night here uh, at Simon Fraser for that one. Down to about five minutes before the anthems and the player introductions here. Take a quick run through the GNAC standings for you and we'll refer to these throughout the game and Coming in uh, leading the way, St. Martins and Montana State Billings. Of course, Billings, the Saturday foe here, as we mentioned, for Simon Fraser, each with 4-0 records in the GNAC. They are the two co-leaders of the conference. Seattle Pacific coming in at a close and comfortable third, sitting with that 3-1 record. Western Washington at 2-1. Western Oregon at 2-2. Two two. Alaska Anchorage, Alaska and Northwest Nazarene all with one win. Anchorage and Alaska with two losses each. Nazarene with three losses. Simon Fraser 0-3. Central Washington with an 0-4 record, and that'll do your GNAC conference standings. We can uh, let you know tonight around the GNAC. All 7 p.m. or 7.30 p.m. starts. Montana State Billings at Western Washington at 7 o'clock. Of course, Seattle Pacific set the tip off here at 7 against Simon Fraser. 7.30 starts around the conference. Alaska Anchorage at Central Washington. And Alaska, the Nanooks out of Fairbanks at Northwest Nazarene, the two 7.30 p.m. starts. Saturday, we'll trip, uh, flip around with those travel partners. 4.15, St. Martin's at Western Oregon. Alaska at Central Washington at 6.15. Montana State Billings here at 7 o'clock. As well at 7 o'clock, Seattle Pacific at Western Washington. And rounding up the night, Alaska Anchorage at Northwest Nazarene, tipping off at 7.30 p.m. So that's your busy men's basketball weekend in the GNAC. As we refer to some of the Simon Fraser players to watch here tonight, we can let you know that uh, George Lefebvre is uh, really starting to turn it up here. 
has 11 points and uh, 5.8 rebounds per game, averaging just under a block as well. For the 6'8", 220-pound sophomore out of Montreal, of course, the transfer from uh, University of Vermont Division I basketball, George Lefebvre wearing number 34, starting to establish himself in the uh, lineup here with the Simon Fraser Red Leafs. We can also let you know uh, there's been some really inspiring performance from David Penny, the junior starting point guard at 6'1", 170 pounds. The Guelph, Ontario native is averaging 10 points, uh, three and a half assists a game, 30 minutes a game, and as well uh, shooting the three ball at a 39% clip for Simon Fraser. Penny uh, had a nice performance in that 79-67 loss at Western Oregon, uh, finishing with uh, 17 points. As well, uh, a player to watch, number 15, of course, the senior. You saw him last season back for his second season with the Red Leafs, and that's uh, Jamal Wright, the 6'5", 190-pound guard forward of Toronto, Ontario. 28.7 minutes per game, averaging 9.2 points, 3.9 rebounds per game. And uh, Jamal in the 94-81 loss December the 29th at St. Martin's, uh, coming through with a team-high 22 points in that game. George Lefebvre had 20 points and 8 rebounds in that game. Penny with uh, 16. And another player we could mention, Elliot Demaculangan, has uh, reassumed uh, a bigger role in that guard rotation. Currently averaging 23.2 minutes per game. The 6'4", 172-pound sophomore out of Mississauga. Averaging 8.2 points, uh, 3 assists a game, 3.9 rebounds per game, and shooting the 3-ball at a 33% clip, Demaculangan in that loss at St. Martin's. Seven points, but also eight rebounds and eight assists. Really doing it, stuffing the staff sheet everywhere. Demaculangan starting to come along. He uh, also had 15 points and went four of six from beyond the arc in the loss at Western Oregon. Part of a 15-point night for him. The team's now leaving the court as we get set for the player introductions and the anthems we can let you know our referees today are Darren Brulin, Wasim Husseini and Kevin Lay I also want to give a shout out to everybody on the uh, minor officials table here at the West Ham as well as our production crew here J led by Jacob Lazar he will produce today's contest our camera operators uh, Katie Zagare and Janae Balkane all part of the Red Leaf team here. Wilson Wong as well, Jacob Hall, Tiffany Martinez. We thank all our referees for seeing us as they come by to give us the fist bump here at, uh, at uh, court level. Nice crowd filing in. The Simon Fraser, a hungry basketball team here for head coach Steve Hansen and company as they get set and go in search of a, a two-game homestand, their first GNAC win of the season. Seattle Pacific, a tough foe. On tap, we'll be back, as we said, after the anthems and after those opening player introductions. Howard Samura here, back with more for the West Gym in a moment. Good evening, boys and gentlemen, basketball fans, and welcome to the West Gym for tonight's game between the visitors, Seattle Pacific University Falcons, and your Simon Fraser University
That is the introduction of the starting lineups. One of the announcers, Mr. Stephen James, we get set. Coach Hansen coming by. The fist bump there is Simon Fraser now in good spirits, ready to take uh, to the court here. Nigel Hilton getting the start, number 23. We mentioned him, the 205 pound freshman, 6'8, out of Toronto, Ontario, and Thornley a secondary. He'll be starting along with Lefebvre, number 34, in the front court, as well the guard group, David Penny, number three, Jamal Wright, number 15, and Elliot Tamakulanga, number 20. They're gonna make up the uh, starting five for this team. Zach Paulson, number one, Sion Blackman, number two, Maui Z, number 10, Shaw Anderson, and Kelton Samore, 24 and 33, respectively, will make up the starting group here for Seattle Pacific. And here come the Falcons, uh, here come the Red Leafs. Simon Fraser itching for that first conference win of the season. That's Samori and Lefebvre, and Seattle Pacific will win that opening tip. In control is Maui Z, and this talented sophomore from Seattle has been hitting threes at an incredible pace. See, look at the quickness as he goes right to the cup and kicks it back out. And right there, a wide open shot for Sion Blackman. 6'1 sophomore from Sammamish, Washington, Eastside Catholic. Of course, Eastside Catholic was just in town here in December to play a hugely successful exhibition game. One of the top teams in the state of Washington this year. There's Demacky Langman. He squares up, and Elliott one on one makes it count. Knots the score immediately here at two. Zach Paulson to the wing, he goes to. Samore underneath. Couldn't find the mark there underneath. Kelton Samore, number 33 at 6-9. SFU with a turnover. It's Z quickly in transition. Here's Z again. The drive and the dish on the baseline right off the window. Unable to find it there, Kelton Samore. And David Penny, the starting point guard, will pick up foul number one here for Simon Fraser. We're 117 into this contest. Kelton Samore, a 6'9", 200-pound sophomore to Portland, Oregon, played in the Patriot League with the at American University, so the transfer portal brings him to Seattle. And he'll step up to the free throw line. Samore makes the first. He is the third leading scorer on this team at 10.1 points per game. He started all 13 games heading in. Seattle Pacific as he misses the second, of course, uh, coming in with that 8-5 overall record, 3-1 in the GNAC. 
third place in the conference. The lane violation is gonna give him a chance here to make good on that second free throw. So a 4-2 lead here for the Falcons. Simon Fraser just looking for that signature performance in the conference. Can they put it all together against a terrific Seattle Pacific team, which actually has one of those tough, tough road wins. Here's Lefebvre, the turnaround. George is just off the mark. Chased down nicely by Damaki Langen. Here's Elliott. Z guarding him quickly to Lefebvre. Little head fake gets George into the paint. Leans into it. Some body English there from Lefebvre as he lays it up and in to tie the game at four. Maui Z. Samore back up top to Paulson for three. Demacke Lang in a hand right in his face. Shot well off the mark there. Nigel Hilton, wearing number 23, will inbound for the Red Leafs. To Mackie Langen, facing that pressure, beats the double team quickly to Hilton. Hilton leans into his defender, can't get the finish, gets an offensive rebound, puts it up and in, and an end one opportunity for, oh, for Nigel Hilton. Kelton Samore getting called for his first foul, first team foul as well here. Hilton stepping up to the free throw line. Nigel Hilton, part of a infusion of new talent on the Simon Fraser team this season. A lot of graduating talent, obviously. Has had to be replaced here. Jamal Wright guarding right now one of those holdovers, but Hilton, among the many newcomers you'll see, Lefebvre also one of those players, and we'll identify more of them as they come on the floor here. To Mackie Lang and Lefebvre, the double quickly out. They go to Samore, puts it on the deck. Hilton on him like glue, and Nigel's going to foul him right underneath the basket. Some great uh, stick to itiveness there from uh, Kelton Samore underneath the basket. So Hilton indeed with the first foul for him today, second team foul. Samore is a business administration communications major. Uh, prepped at Brighton Academy, and as we mentioned, a native of Portland, Oregon. And he has been Mr. N1 here. Making it go in the Falcons with that one point lead at seven to six right now. Here's to Mackie Langan. Penny. Guarded by Blackman. They go back up top to Lefebvre, now to Jamal Wright. Shot clock now down to nine for David Penny. Penny with a jab there, he's gonna get called on the perimeter, trying to get into sync with that explosive dribble drive that he does have, unable to get things going there, and right now a one point deficit for Simon Fraser. Ripping that away is Hilton. Here comes Penny. Got the new uh, haircut, the uh, less air resistance there for number three. New haircut for the new year, David Penny. Here's Jamal Wright. Again, shot clock down to 10 here for Lefebvre. Three ball hoisted by Penny. Bingo, David Penny will knock down the three ball. And that's going to give Simon Fraser the 9-7 lead here. That three so huge in the way that Penny is able to keep his defenders at bay. Great to see him from his perspective hit the early big three ball there. Zach Stone, the big man, set the check in next for Simon Fraser. And that ball goes into the post looking for Sion Blackman off his fingertips. And Simon Fraser will... Take possession, but first a timeout. We'll take a short timeout as well. Be back with more from the West Gym in a moment.
And that horn bringing us back to live action here for the West Gym. Simon Fraser opening the game, uh, going four of six from the floor, including that three by Penny. They're 0 for 1 from the free throw line. Uh, Seattle Pacific 2 of 5, 0 of 2 from the 3, and of course have made all three of their free throws. Thanks for joining us once more on Red Leaf TV. Of course, more to come Saturday, 7 o'clock, Montana State. Billings in town. Hope you can join us. If you can't be here at the West Gym for that one, uh, tune in at 7 o'clock. Here's Penny. Ooh, that's a tough turnaround shot for Penny. Really couldn't square himself as he turned around. Had a good look at it, but unable to pull that one out of his uh, back pocket. That's Trey Sevens, the perhaps the most traveled player in the GMAC. And a big shout out to everybody in New South Wales, Australia. The freshman Trey Sevens, wearing number 14. And he. Uh, Enter the transfer porter, portal plate for the Kangaroos at Missouri, Kansas City, and has found his way to the Emerald City here now in Canada, playing his NCAA two, Division II basketball. So a shout out to everybody down under. Great step into the paint there by Shaw Anderson. And I misidentified. I think I said Anderson had scored a hoop early. That was indeed uh, Sion Blackman. My apologies there, that opening hoop of the game. Jimmy Zaborniak, the freshman from Burnaby South, set the check-in at the next stop. It's yours, Lefebvre puts up a three off the back iron, skying for the rebound there. Great job from uh, Zach Paulson. And now it's back to Z. Maui Z. Back to Paulson for three. And again, Tamaki Langan is right there defensively. Elliot Tamaki Langan's played a heck of a game. He's going to take a seat here. He's guarded well in the post and... Uh, has gotten out on those shooters. Now Zaborniak will team with Penny. And Zaborniak has had some incredible moments. Wearing number one, of course, the MVP at the BC Boys Quad A Provincial Championships where he led Burnaby South to that provincial title last March. Here's Zach Stone for three. Bingo, the big man with the soft touch from the outside. And number 21 plays the strings there. 12-9, Simon Fraser. They kick it back out, and the jump shot there from Anderson knocked it. As we mentioned, Anderson shooting 46% from three-point. He's leading this uh, Falcons team in three-point shooting. So some changes on the floor. Victor Radichai, a lot of Richmond now in the game, wearing number 35, the big man will step in and guard Trace Evans. Of course, uh, Radichai, a Eastern Washington uh, transfer. Okay, Sean Roos, also an Eastern Washington guy. Those guys probably know each other well. They're on the floor, number three for Seattle Pacific. And he's got the ball right now. Turnaround shot from the elbow, and Roos knocks it down right in front of Radichai. So the two former Eastern Washington Eagles out of Cheney, Washington, coming together on the floor. Simon Fraser, though, still with that one-point lead. 12 to 11. Here's Penny, little head fake off the Radichai screen just off the side iron. This game picking up some nice feeling here in the first seven minutes. Anderson, baseline, driving. Evans back up top, and ooh, that's a tough break there for Jamal Wright. Kassan Roos there, the Lacey Washington native. Uh, and he's going to get fouled. Jamal Wright with his first. Simon Fraser's third team foul. And inbounding right in front of our broadcast location will be Shaw Anderson, the 6'6 junior to Kelso, Washington. And as soon as we say Kelso, we look on his... Uh, arm of his left of his left arm near his shoulder and there's a tattoo of Kelso right on his arm so we know he got the right guy ID'd Shaw Anderson he's had a terrific start to his sophomore season this time he takes the ball batted away and look at this right down the floor going for the dunk knocked away from underneath Ben Baker McCann the Berkeley California native is going to get called for the foul <laughs> The freshman, Oladele, set to uh, deliver a dunk with authority as it knocked away, but will get to the free throw line. Exactly 
seven minutes into this first half of play. So that'll be uh, Baker McCann's first and the second team foul. Berkeley McCann, uh, first time we've called his name, 6'2", 180, a junior, as we mentioned, uh, out of the home of the California Golden Bears, Berkeley, California. Emmanuel Oladele is one of those uh, players that uh, has had standout written on him from the moment he took to the floor, really was uh, in the preseason, the borderline, the coaching staff wondering, do we redshirt this guy, do we bring him in? But number five has been so good. And he's able to make it count. Oladelli, a Niagara Falls native. 66205, and as we said, pure freshman, just like Jimmy Zaborniak, number one. And it's been a tough nut, nut for freshmen to crack. Uh, pure freshman we're talking about here, straight out of high school, and it's happened here with a few guys on this Simon team. A little back up top for the three. Radichai was almost there. They unable to hit it though, and that was uh, Black uh, Blackman. time it was Roos and Zach Stone ripping that one away here's Penny pushing the tempo as he comes up the floor he'll slow it up quickly to Stone who hit the three back to Penny Penny's drawing a crowd here plenty of time on this clock it's Joven Ryan Demacke Langan set the check-in for Simon at the next stoppage here's Stone he'll go to Oladele Emmanuel's baseline move kicks it back up top Stone thought about it all alone from three and Stone hits the triple. Feeling it from downtown. Stone makes it 19-11, Simon Fraser. Simon Fraser has to step in defensively. They like the combo they have out there right now. And Stone, nobody was going to come up and guard him. And he can knock down that triple. Here's Zaborniak. Nice defense there on Baker McCann. Back up top. Blackman inside. That little lefty hook doesn't go, but the whistle blows. Trace Evans will get to the free throw line. Trace Evans is a large human, six foot nine, and he packs a, a real kind of uh, build to him. So he will head to the free throw line after the timeout. 19-11, we'll take a short timeout as the Simon Fraser dance team takes to the floor. Back with more from the West Gym in just a moment. Brings us back to the West Jim Howard Samura here with you wherever you're watching. Thanks for joining us on Red Leafs TV, the home of Simon Fraser, men's and women's basketball, and all other uh, varsity sports here under the Red Leaf banner atop Burnaby Mountain. Simon Fraser, the only non US team in the NCAA. Thanks for joining us. A great crowd on hand here today at the West Jim as they watch the Red Leafs in action. Simon Fraser, 6 of 11 from the field, 3 of 4 from beyond the arc and uh, four or five from the free throw line. Those numbers are gonna add up to success. No matter how you slice it, Simon Fraser, largest lead of the game at eight points. Right now is Evans misses that first free throw. That was the first miss from the stripe today for the Falcons. Seattle Pacific fighting it a bit though, shooting 25%, the four 12 from the field. They are 0 of four from beyond the arc. Ooh, and some struggles there for the big man, Trace Evans, as he uh, fails to hit one of the free throws there, or both of them, rather. Oladele 
High low feed to Radichai. Here's Vic with his back to the basket. Great little turnaround move with the hook. And Vic Radichai, what a beautiful basket. Could have had a call there down underneath from uh, the officials. Evans was uh, playing it pretty physical, but Radichai would love to get him going. A super talent uh, out of Eastern Washington McMass Secondary in Richmond. Three ball on the way off the iron, and Simon Fraser's got to take advantage of these cold spells right now by the Falcons because we know what quality they brought here to Burnaby Mountain. Lefebvre, oh, he's, boy, Evans is getting away with some stuff, I think. 21-11, a 10-point lead. There's Roos. He's going to get it back. Drives to 13, kicks it back out, and the three ball, bingo. Zach Paulson. And Paulson shoots it at a 41% clip. He's one of the best shooters on that team, and he knocks it down 21 14. Seven point lead for Simon Fraser, the lead in the basketball. Red Leafs in their home whites here today as we reach the midway mark or nearing it of this opening half of play. Here's Ola Dele. Shot clock now at 10. Simon Fraser scrambling. Radichai picks up a loose ball, tries to feed Lefebvre on the baseline, stolen away there by Evans. Kassan Roos, a dervish on the floor as he dribbles. Great little fake there, great move to the rim. Can't get the finish though for Blackman. But they are able to finish it off and right now the Falcons have got themselves on a little run. Simon Fraser calling a timeout. They want to talk things over. We'll keep it here. 21-16. That lead was, uh, that lead was, uh, it was at 19-11. So it was at 8 as we came out of the last timeout. So nice, uh, nice basketball here from the Falcons to close it to 5 to make it a two-possession game. The Falcons uh, coached by Mr. Grant Leap. His assistants, uh, Kefri Fazio, David Choi, and George Parker. And of course, uh, Seattle Pacific uh, is a generational rival of Simon Fraser. Although Simon Fraser spent a brief uh, time playing within the Canadian University system, uh, at the start of the century, it has largely been as an independent an NAIA school and now as an NCAA Division II school, locking horns with Seattle Pacific at virtually every turn. And it's been uh, great having, of course, having them as a geographic rival here in the GNAC. They're here today in their road maroons. Starting to turn things around here, of course. Coming in with that three-game win streak. Joven Rye wearing zero now on the floor as well as Demacke Langen. Number 20 puts up the three, doesn't go, and there's a rebound right there from Paulson. Maui Z now back leading the team from the point guard position. Z is shooting a phenomenal 57% from three, but I uh, haven't seen him take a lot of them yet today. There's another three hoisted from some more. Joven Rye, Oladelli little fake, tries to beat Paulson off the dribble, can't do it, goes back to Rye. 8.52 to the half. Lefebvre tries to bull his way instead now to Rye in the half court. Spin move from Joven. Great little dish underneath and a reverse layup. George Lefebvre, some magic underneath the basket. A beautiful full extension reverse layup from the Vermont transfer, the Montreal native. 23 to 16, a seven point lead. Simon Fraser. Doing their best to defend here as Blackman puts up the three and he's gonna drop a dagger there, 23 to 19. Here come the Falcons, now down by only four. Jamal Wright, number 15, will check in for Simon Fraser at the next stoppage. Look at that battle going on underneath between Lefebvre and, uh, and Samore. Six foot nine, 200 pounds Samore. And the six eight, 220 pound Lefebvre. A lot of bodies bashing around down low. Grant Leap, he's going to keep bringing in the big guys. They'll take some more out, but he's going to bring in the Australian Trace Evans. Is 
doesn't get any easier for Lefebvre. Here's Joven Rye, the reverse underneath. Joven Rye, one of the nicest baskets he scored this season. There was some true explosion there for number zero as he drove to the basket and laid it up and in. 25-19, six point lead, Red Leafs. Evans spinning, bullying Hilton all over him. But it is that low center of gravity, that body strength that gets him where he wants to go in the paint and he plays it well to make it a 25-21 game. Here's Joven. Rye off the window. Really got himself into a great position. You see him slapping his hands together knowing that uh, he created a great chance for himself there. Zach Stone, David Penny, Jimmy Zaborniak now into the game, but another timeout here. 7.13 remaining, we'll keep it right here. And now it's time to uh, let you know about some real good news on the Red Leafs front today on the road. And as soon as we can find those numbers, we will tell you because the Simon Fraser women's team come through with uh, a huge win today. They are able to extract a 66 to 61 win over Northwest Nazarene down in Nampa, Idaho today. And uh, that is a big victory. Simon Fraser goes to two and two on the season. Northwest Nazarene falls to three and two. And some of the numbers we can let you know about today in a low scoring game, no surprise. In 36 minutes and 50 seconds of floor time, Jessica Wazotsky leads the way 23 points for the conference's most accomplished scorer. She uh, puts home 23. She also has six rebounds and a couple of blocks today and just one turnover in 37 minutes to play for Wazotsky is something to look at. Sophia Wazotsky with 10 points, dual 13 point performance as well, off the bench from both Georgia Swan and Grace Killens. The pair combining to shoot five of 10 from beyond the arc, love that from a clan of SFU uh, Red Leafs perspective. So good to see all those good things happen and Gemma Cutler uh, with a career high, I'm told by Sports Information Director Wilson Wong, 13 rebounds today. So Gemma Cutler with a career high, 13 rebounds in that victory. She also had, uh, let's look under Gemma's line here as we get back to play, five points and another five block shots for Gemma Cutler. What a job by Simon Fraser's women on the road today to get that win in Idaho. Back to live action here, coming out of the timeout, Simon Fraser with a four point lead and their undoing has been the lack of 40 minutes this uh, this season. Uh, Coach Hansen standing right in front of our broadcast location knows all about that and so does the team. That's what they want to work at here. They've gotten off to a solid start here. Jamal Wright, oh the reverse is working to sweet perfection for Simon Fraser. And coming in off the bench. Got a starting uh, nod again today, but Jamal Wright sat, came back in, and that is the third reverse layup. The second one that's drawn an in one opportunity here for Simon Fraser in this half. And Wright doesn't even uh, hesitate. He just loads up from 15 and knocks down the free throw. Is it, is it, is it not uh, 24, 26, 27, that's correct. 27, 21, a six point lead here. Now he's he, to Blackman. Moving it around, they go to the wing now to Evans. Cross court, he goes, tees it up from three, and that is a world-class three-point release there from Maui Z. He told you about what he came in shooting, 55.6%. He's only averaging 6.5 on the season, but he's been hot of late in terms of just overall scoring volume, so we know we could potentially somebody could just absolutely light you up. That's a great three-point stroke. Underneath, trying to get one in close quarters. Lefebvre just can't battle through the physicality underneath from Shaw Anderson taking up some good space underneath. There's Sion Blackman, the head fake underneath. Looks for Evans underneath, but 
Following the miss there, Sion Blackman, the Sammamish Washington native, follows it, pulls his team to within one. And this has been as close as Seattle Pacific has been in a long time. Simon Fraser led by as many as 10 earlier in this half, now down to one. Here's Stone, quickly to Lefebvre, rolls off the back of the rim. Tough break there for George Lefebvre. We'll try and dig in here and really make this defensive stance count. Oh, and that hurts. Potential four-point play as Shaw Anderson rises, knocks down the three from the very top of the arc, and Lefebvre getting the foul. Oh, that's a tough one. That is a tough one. It's going to give the uh, Falcons the lead at uh, 29 to 28. And he will let that one roll home. So a two-point lead here now. The swing now, 12 points from its lowest ebb for the Falcons. Their lead, 30 to 28. Tamaki Langa, number 20, set to come into the game for Simon Fraser. Lavetev back up top to Stone. They go to Zaborniak. Jimmy, that great quick dribble, kicks it out. Jamal for three. Whistle blows underneath the basket. And Kevin Lay, the official, calling the foul. Oh, it's going to go against David Penny. It's his second foul. Nobody in foul trouble, per se, here. So it's been pretty clean in that regard here as we get to five minutes remaining in this first half. Z with a basketball. Anderson to Paulson to Blackman for three, and we're starting to see that three-point game come to life here for the Falcons. Yeah, their five-point uh, lead is their biggest of this basketball game. 33 to 28, Simon Fraser wanting a response here. Penny to Demacke Langan. Elliott cross-court pass, wanted to look for Penny to shoot that three in rhythm, intercepted, and look at this, Paulson races down the floor. And now the lead up to seven. Simon Fraser, do they have that one kick here before the uh, end of this opening half? Something they can take into the halftime locker room. That's going to be key here for them. Look at the tip balls here. Simon Fraser lucky to get that one back. Penny now. Blackman guarding him. Penny going to Stone, who releases underneath. Out of a double team quickly. Demacke Lang in baseline. The drive, the kick to Penny, deflected. Have you ever seen fingertips at work here? Stone missing. Seattle Pacific, their stat keepers, I'm telling you, are getting the pencil out. They're giving it a workout, and they are stuffing the stat box with pass deflections. And as this timeout comes, I mean, I think you can tell head coach Grant Leap is a happy man. The way his team is defending in the half court, and if you want to ex equate effort with tip balls, you're seeing it right now from the Falcons. That is uh, textbook defense extending and getting a fingertip on everything. That is, and that can be deflating too for Simon Fraser, trying to move that ball, trying to gain momentum. You saw that ball coming to Penny, looking for that three-pointer in rhythm. Boom, there's a fingertip right in his face. It's all over the floor right now. So. Simon Fraser's in one of these key breaking points in the game where, hey, how much do you want this thing right before the half? There's three minutes and 45 seconds to see if they can make a statement in that regard as they get set to come up with this timeout. And really key for a team trying to get off the schneid here and get that opening win of the conference season. Howard Samura with you here from the West Gym. Thanks for joining us on Red Leafs TV. Our thanks, as always, to producer Jacob Lazar for getting us on the air. and. Uh, Everyone at the minor officials table here and everyone on our dedicated crew, including our camera operators today. They are uh, Jenny Belkane and Katie Zagari. Thank you, everybody, for your efforts. The officials uh, today, Darren Brulin, Wasim Hosseini, and Kevin Lay, they are the three in stripes here. Familiar faces here in the West Gym throughout the course of a GNAC season. Of course, to our uh, 
to our friends uh, within the Seattle Pacific fan base. Thanks for watching and to know that the Falcons are at uh, Carver Gym on 7 o'clock to play that uh, incredibly talented uh, Western Washington Vikings team, which is trying to make a real statement here. Carver Gym, 7 o'clock. They have been a good team consistently is more what I'm trying to say here, just in terms of their program, Seattle Pacific as well. So it should be a great game, 7 o'clock. And for the Simon Fraser audience, Montana State Billings will be in the gym uh, for a 7 p.m. start January the 7th. That's this Saturday. Remember the $500 paper airplane contest, part of the festivities. Uh, come Saturday, Simon Fraser, of course, uh, will then embark on their Alaska road trip for the season, heading to Fairbanks and then Anchorage on the 12th and 14th, respectively. Seattle Pacific returns home to face Western Oregon on January the 12th and uh, St. Martin's on the 14th. And what a great momentum this GNAC season creates uh, for those fans of GNAC basketball to watch it over the course of the season. Is to see some great, great collegiate basketball. Here's Penny, 3.37 left in this half. To Mackie Langan, he's gonna pull up the three from the corner. A good look at it, couldn't get it again. Tipped and, uh, and later squeezed there by Evans. Trace Evans has had a good first half off the bench. Here's Anderson kicking it out. Blackman, drive, dish, Paulson. Quickly to the corner, and that was Anderson. Sprinted to the far side and got another look at three. Couldn't get it to go. Hilton from about 16 is going to knock it down. Nigel Hilton, the medium range game for number 23. Makes it a five point deficit for Simon Fraser. Z drives in, kicks it out for three. And right now, that penetration dish game has been deadly because Seattle Pacific is knocking it down from the baseline corners. That's Zach Paulson knocking it down. The Curtis High School grad. 38 to 30, Seattle Pacific right now has come a long way to gain some momentum here with two and a half minutes remaining. That time the reverse doesn't go for Penny. Rejected down low. But will stay with Simon Fraser, I believe. Indeed it will, David Penny set the inbound. Joven Rye coming in for Hilton. Joven Rye with a beautiful drive to the basket and a reverse layup earlier in this half. Nicest hoop I've seen him score here at home this season. Well, Hilton's, good. Hilton's gonna stay in, Zach Stone is gonna come out. Hilton just fresh off that last jump shot to Demacke Langan. Shot clock's down to four. Demacke Langan's got to make up his mind here. Quickly they go to Hilton. Three ball is going to go off the rim at the shot clock buzzer. Here's Paulson. Steps on the gas, gets it down court. Here's Anderson. Back to Paulson. Scrappy Seattle Pacific team in the half court. Z feeds Anderson back to the basket. Turns and a uh, bit of a hip check there from Joven Rye. Well, that's going to be a foul there. Bonus in effect, and that's going to put Anderson at the free throw line. He makes the first, and the chance now to actually make this a double-digit lead here. It's an indication of Simon Fraser's struggles over the last six or seven minutes of this second half. Of course, as we mentioned, Simon Fraser, the largest lead at 10. The make here by Shaw Anderson will make it a 20-point turnaround. But a great crowd on hand, near, near capacity here on a Thursday. Great to see a terrific crowd here at the West Gym, and Simon Fraser wants to give these fans something to cheer about. There have been moments where Simon Fraser has taken control of this game, but they're having trouble right now as Anderson swishes that last free throw. So just under two minutes remaining here as Oladele now set the check-in of the game. Jamal right, the handoff to Penny. 
to Mackie Langan. A dervish hangs in the air. There was some hang time on that for Elliot to Mackie Langan. Time seemed to be frozen there as he uh, rose for that basket. Oh, look at the big man underneath. Nigel Hilton comes out of nowhere, swats it away from Trace Evans, keys the break. And now it's David Penny back up the court, trailing Elliot to Mackie Langan off the front iron. Evans quickly now. Goes to Roos. And back to back to the point guard Z. Three ball. This one's not gonna go. Oh, is that gonna be? Oh, that's a tough one. With 103 remaining, and Demaki Langan is gonna get called for the foul. As Kassan Roos took that three ball from right in front of the Simon Fraser bench. Simon Fraser has already given up a four point play to Shaw Anderson on a made three and one opportunity. This time, a three point basket from the free, three point uh, play from the stripe is possible here. That's only gonna be two as Roos misses the first. But those are tough breaks with the clock stopped right now to allow uh, Seattle Pacific a chance to continue to hover in that double digit range is a little deflating for Simon Fraser. That's a tough one. Roos makes the second, has one more opportunity here to make it a 10 point lead. Big Trace Evans. Lining up there. That one's gonna swirl home a 10 point lead. Evans has been fun to watch and you can see how he's gonna evolve into this in this conference. He brings in that uh, Physicality already as a freshman. So we're we're guessing based on where he came from, Missouri, Kansas City, that he went there, did not play, and is using his first season of freshman eligibility this year. So he's gonna develop into something special for the Seattle Pacific team coming off the bench in his freshman season. Officials here uh, disputing or Steve Hansen uh, trying to make his case with the official Wasim Hosseini. And it looks like uh, they realized their error, Simon Fraser. One minute remaining, first half of play, Simon Fraser. They're just trying to make something positive happen here that can tee off a run to start the second half from their perspective. But Boy, Seattle Pacific's played it well. They played it smart, and they've worked hard down the stretch drive here of this opening half. Zone defense here. Driving right through it. Hilton powers his way to the basket. Almost got it to go, and there's been a few too many almost for Simon Fraser as we're down to 30 seconds remaining in this opening half of play. 30-second timeout being called here. Maui Z uh, will check in after this short timeout. Zach Stone as well will check in for Simon Fraser. Zach Stone said a nice first half. Everybody talks about the three-point ability they had rather coming into this season. Zach Stone could have stepped in and helped this team last season, but they preserved that year, and he's going to have a wonderful Simon Fraser career. But a great touch from three, and Stone has knocked down a couple of triples. David Penny with one as well here in this opening half for Simon Fraser. But no moral victories here now for head coach Steve Hansen's team. They need to get a win to hang into this GNAC race. They coming into play tonight at 0-3, Central Washington at 0-4, the two winless teams in conference play, and that's uh, not something you want hanging around uh, much longer. That can uh, start to play on you. Simon Fraser certainly would love to get that first conference victory. I really think the, the separation game during that great stretch of Seattle Pacific did it with their defense in the half court. We talked about how many pass deflections, how many tip balls and blocks that we saw over a short concentrated period of time, maybe three straight SFU possessions. But it was key in terms of them preventing Simon Fraser 
from getting a sniff here. So now here's Z playing from position of strength. There's about a six and a half second difference in the clocks here, down to 18 seconds remaining. Now we skip. Roos back, fading. Paulson in and out. Six seconds left. Here's Demacke Langen down to four, down to three. He's going to pull up for three. Oh, off the front iron. Tough break there for Elliot Demacke Langen. Simon Fraser trailing 42 32 at the half. They've got a battle ahead in the second half. Seattle Pacific with a 10 point lead. We'll be back in a few moments, maybe about 12 minutes here from the West Jib. We'll have a uh, look at the numbers as we head uh, into and set you up for the second half of play. Seattle Pacific 42, Simon Fraser 32, the first half from the West Gym in Burnaby. Back with more in a moment. college sports there's light at the end of the tunnel a return to normal and all we love about sports you've instilled resilience focus and selflessness in us we've put those lessons to work we've found strength and unity in each other you continue to take us places we never imagined you bring out the best in us so when we look forward we see the light at the end of the tunnel we see a better world for all of us and, and for college, college sports, sports. to build bridges. I'm here to promote inclusion. To embrace diversity. To learn from others. I'm here to support my community. I'm here to lift people up. To engage. To listen. I am here to grow. Its member schools offer nearly half a million college athletes a path to go pro in something other than sports. Learn more at NCAA.org. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here to create. To innovate. To do research that matters. I am here to continue asking questions. To continue learning. To expand my horizons. I am here to grow. If I lose, I'll respond with respect. If I win, I'll back it up with humility. If I fail, I'll rise up with honor. It's tough for us to put it all on the line. Don't undo my hard work with poor sportsmanship. Respect, it's the name of the game. 
I'm here to get more than a degree. I'm here to explore. To connect. To learn. I am here to forge a new path. To push myself. To set goals and achieve them. I am here to win. I am here to grow. Up north, the elements shape us. And like those elements, we are powerful, strong, resilient. Our red leaf is the ultimate symbol of our unity. Behind this icon have stood generations of athletes and coaches from all over BC, across the country, and around the world, who have chosen our university to pursue their passion. Champions, Olympians, legends have made Burnaby Mountain their home. This is it for the Great Cup victory. The cycling is kicking back. It's good. I had a dream that came into my head that one day I'd try and run across Canada. I gotta set my goal five. Because I believe in miracles and I have to. It doesn't get much better than perfect. SFU are your national champion. Canada's first Olympic gold in women's wrestling. Grounded in our strong, rich athletic history and united by the symbol of the SFU leaf, our athletes wear the SFU colors together with pride. Every time we wear our leaf, we are inspired by that timeless sense of unity and harness that shared teamwork and determination to charge into the new season with a renewed sense of passion, inspiration, and commitment. We are the SFU Red Leafs. Welcome to our new era.
And we're back with you here from Simon Fraser University, sitting at the top of Burnaby Mountain in beautiful Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. Thanks for joining us here on Red Leafs TV. I'm Howard Samura, your play-by-play -play announcer. And Simon Fraser, the home team in their home whites, trailing by 10 points, 42-32 to the visiting Seattle Pacific Falcons in their road maroon jerseys. Let's look at some of the numbers. Simon Fraser has uh, come up against a hot shooting Seattle Pacific team shooting 50% from the field in that opening half. The Falcons were 14 of 28 from the field, including 6 of 13, 46% from beyond the arc. Also a shooting 73% to 8 of 11 from the free throw line. So all the numbers adding up for head coach Grant Leap and company. We can let you know the leading scorers on this Seattle Pacific team. They're led by the 10 points of Sion Blackman. Blackman hit a couple of uh, a couple of threes. He was 4-7 overall from the field for a 10-point opening half. A low-scoring game and the only double-digit scorer in this game, Sion Blackman, the guard. Uh, right now, the Sammamish Washington Eastside Catholic native leading the way. He's averaging 7.3 points per game on the season, so a nice effort for Blackman in that opening half. Eight points for Shaw Anderson, the team's leading scorer. Shaw Anderson came in averaging a healthy 19.8 points per game. He only took four shots from the field, though others have pitched in. Uh, Blackman uh, with eight points in that opening half as well. Zach Paulson, the other guard, uh, one or one, or a guard. Paulson, uh, eight points, but also six rebounds. And if you put a lot of credence in the plus minus stat, uh, the highest plus minus in the game right now at a plus 17, and that's Zach Paulson wearing number one, the 6'4", 190-pound sophomore from University Place, Washington, and Curtis High School. He had himself a nice first half of play for Simon Fraser. A no double digit scores, as we mentioned, but uh, led by the six points of Zach Stone, the big man, coming in and hitting a couple of three-point baskets. Uh, in that opening half of play, the Ottawa native on a Louis Riel high. He's been averaging uh, 6.7 points, 5.5 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks per game in his limited role off the bench. But Zach Stone showed himself to be a very valuable part of Simon Fraser's uh, rotation here. The bench uh, did contribute 14 points in that first half of play. Simon Fraser, though, needs the entire starting group to step up, and uh, they shot a combined 8 of 24. We're talking Nigel Hilton, George Lefebvre, David Penny, Jamal Wright, and Elliot DeMackey-Langan. A combined 8 of 24, 33% from that group, uh, and they would have scored 12 and 8, 18 points on that 8 of 24 score, and you know that they are capable of so much more, and uh, they want to give more, so we'll see what happens here. Uh, in this second half of play, down to 25 seconds before the start of play resumes. And we want to remind everybody as well, and our thanks to Wilson Wong from SFU Sports Information, letting us know everything that's happening. You're going to hear a horn here in about 10 seconds, but we want to let you know that women's wrestling uh, will be in dual meets versus Linfield, Oregon, and Simpson, California on Saturday. Also on Sunday, the Lady Grapplers, uh, Matt Cat Invitational meet at Linfield, uh, McMinnville, Oregon. Men's wrestling on Saturday. Four dual meets at the Tracy Bora Duels hosted by Western Colorado in Gunnison. And check athletics.sfu.ca for the latest info. The social media account at SFU under, underscore athletics. Keep up to date with everything Red Leafs related. 42-32, Seattle Pacific with the lead. And the Falcons will have the ball to start the second half. <clears throat> Three-pointer on the way immediately and a statement from Kelton Samore. Making his 14th start of the season, Samore is all about uh, the three ball there as he hits it right from the top. He hit one as well earlier in the first half and got fouled on it. Simon Fraser reversing to Lefebvre. The handoff now to Jamal Wright. Wright on the baseline. Gets a double team quickly. Again, active hands on defense. And this time Shaw Anderson knocks it away, squeezes it, gets his team down the court and gets the ball 
into the hands of Maui Z. Samora thought about it, this time goes right into the paint, challenges Damaki Langan, gets it to fall. Damaki Langan will get called for the foul and you can see the elation and the emotion on the face of number 33 of the Falcons, Kelton Samora. Now is our foul light? No, it is working. Damaki Langan second of the game, the first team foul here. In the first minute of play here in the second half. So Samora at the free throw line. He's going to make that count. Forty-eight to thirty-two. Largest lead of the game is at sixteen. Fading on the baseline, Penny can't get it to go. Tries to follow the miss. Samore quickly in there to or Samore rather to squeeze the rebound. Maui Z. Some more there, stopped by Hilton. Takes a tumble at the free throw line. Back to Paulson. Blackman's three is not going to go. Ripped away, Lefebvre, great concentration. But Demacke Langan takes a knock. And I saw Lefebvre fall. I did not see Demacke Langan. Let's hope Elliott's okay. He is going to shake that one off as he gets up. Number 20. He's indicating that he's fine. Right now, Simon Fraser in the proverbial pickle here at the start of the second half. They give up a three and an N1 here. And now that deficit goes quickly from 10 to 16. And they don't have the basketball. Here's Anderson, Shaw Anderson. Sion Blackman quickly to Z. Maui Z. And that surname spelt S-Z-E, but pronounced Z, I'm told. There's the three ball from the top, and Samora hits his second triple of this second half. We're not even two minutes in. And this thing has uh, gotten out of hand here. It's now at 19 points, nine straight points to open the second half here. Simon Fraser, they've got to come back in them. They better start quickly, and they're going to do a nice job there with Hilton. Nigel Hilton tees up a triple, and he gets three back. You can only think possession to possession right now for Simon Fraser, just bear down on every one of them. That's the only way momentum is ever taken away from a team in this sport. Here's Samore, great open floor capabilities. This time the reverse, Samore is doing it all. Really owning the game right now. We mentioned he's a Patriot League drop down from American University. 6'9", 200 pound sophomore. Here he is again. He is bringing everyone into rhythm. Great look there for Paulson, couldn't get it to go. Here's Hilton, the freshman, quickly to Stone. Down he goes in a beautiful basket. Jamal Wright finishes. And you love what Zach Stone and and uh, Nigel Hilton, 21 and 23 respectively, brought to that play. Simon Fraser showing an offensive spark on that series, but they just can't stop 33. Locked down some more. It's gotta be their MO here, but what a great take to the basket there from their leading scorer, Shaw Anderson. Anderson brings that nice blend for head coach Grand Leap of Size, strength, but agility facing the basket. He can get your rebounds down low, but he can take you off the dribble as well. Here's Penny for three. Oh, the point guard had a good look at that one. 18 point deficit right now. The three ball from Blackman doesn't go to Mackie Langan. Rebound, lost it, got it back from teammate Hilton. Goes right to the rim, lays it up and can't get it to fall. That's a tough one for Demacke Lang, and he went the full 94 and couldn't finish it. Z thought about it. He is the most team-oriented guy you're gonna see in this conference. 
Crowley Z, who's just an incredible shooter, fading from the basket. Can't get that one to go, no call underneath as Shaw Anderson had a good look at it. Here's Maui, little hesitation, he goes to the rack, he doesn't get it to fall. For all his unselfishness, finally goes right to the rim but can't get it to go. Here's Demacke Langen for three. Oh, what a finish there, coming in, swooping in out of nowhere, Jamal Wright. Get a little more excited if they weren't down by 16, but he put on his cape there. Number 15, outstanding Jamal Wright. Soaring to the basket. Maui, back up top they go. Samora one on one against Stone. Zach standing his ground. Samora is on fire right now. Number 33. <laughs> to watch Samora. His alter ego or his uh, or his good buddy off the bench, Trace Evans, comes up and the two are just uh, in a bit of elation right now, having some sharing the basketball mojo for Seattle Pacific. What a job they're doing right now. But Samore is just uh, unguardable right now on the floor. You know, look at what he had at the half. And we will do some quick math here. Kelton Samore was one of three from the field. He's now six at the half. He's now six of eight. So you do the simple math to see he's five of five from the field and he's gone from, he's gone from having five points to having 18 points. So he's five of five and he scored 13 points in a span of 525. In a span of 525, five of five from the floor, 13 points for Samore. And they are leading now by 20, by 18. Yeah, by 18 points. And they were leading by 10. He's got 13 in five minutes and 25 seconds. Have a game, Kelton Samore. That is some incredible play. And we talked about him. Came in averaging 10.1 points per game, number three on the team. Played his, or made his first stop out of Brighton Academy, the prep school at American University in the Patriot League. And he's a sophomore to Portland, Oregon. Shout out to everybody in the Rose City watching. Some more. Have a great game here at the West Gym. Coming out of the timeout now. Oladele, look at the freshman, go right to the rim. Stone with the tip at the rim, Zach rises. Pokes it home and gets Simon two points out of the timeout. You see Simon Fraser changing the schematic defensively. Trying to prevent that uh, action in the paint here as they go zone. It looks like a pretty aggressive zone. They get a stop. They prevent Shaw Anderson from scoring inside. Quickly, Oladele pulls up. Off the mark there with that quick release three from number five. 16 points at deficit. 13 minutes remaining, 13.40 remaining. Simon Fraser needs to push the go button right now and keep the foot on the pedal right to the end here. They want to try and get back into this game. There's a three ball. So right now, the zone affecting the rhythm of that three-point shooting game. Look at that step through there from Penny. Thought he was going to get to the rim. Baker McCann right to the basket, though. Simon Fraser needs points, but they, they don't want to trade. They want to try to bully their way here a bit. They're going to have to. So many easy baskets here from Seattle Pacific. Right to the rim goes Hilton. Finger roll won't go. Tries to recover it and does. Hilton, you know how good this freshman group is going to be when you watch that kind of play. Here's Penny. Puts his head down. There's another timeout called here. 12.52 remaining in the game. But how about Kelton Samore? That was something else. Fifty-nine to forty-one, the score. Eighteen points at deficit, and that is not an easy 
tied to stem here for the home team tonight because this Seattle Pacific team is threatening in the early going to be one of the hottest teams in the GNAC, if not the hottest team. Look for their fourth straight victory here. And I will say they are one, they are one and three on the road overall and uh, really haven't had a ton of road success as we mentioned, got that win at Anchorage. But coming up here to start their two game weekend, John through the northwest of the United States and into Canada, I think it clearly will be a, another confidence builder for this Falcons team. Simon Fraser from their perspective, and we talked about it right off the top, wanting that first conference victory, wanting it the big way and showing off the hop some great play early in that first half. But this is a young team in many regards. And I know that uh, this team would dearly love to see the second half of that Vermont transfer duo of George Lefebvre, but also of Eric Beckett, the 6'4", 230-pound junior, who's struggled through the preseason with that hamstring and is not dressed. And you know he would be a huge element in this game. Toughness personified from Beckett. There's Joven Rye. Joven Rye is all try, and I don't mean that in any kind of uh, bad way. I mean it in the most positive way possible. His work ethic on the floor just shows he wants to help his team so badly. There's a baseline opportunity. A sliver presents itself, and there's Sion Blackman. Asim Wasani making the call. The foul against Jamal Wright, his second of the game. Paulson's going to come in for Shaw. Shaw Anderson checked that for Anderson. George Lefebvre now set the check in for Simon Fraser. Zach Stone will come out. Jamal Wright will come out as well for Simon. No, he will stay in the game. David Penny. Penny rises off the front of the iron, follows his miss right to the rim, can't get it to go. Penny a rebound underneath, no foul called. Penny, the motor, fully engaged. And that is earning two the hard way. And you gotta give number three a ton of credit there. No quit in David Penny underneath the basket. Takes a shot, follows the miss, gets the old board, gets another one, and finally, is fouled underneath, the foul being called against Sion Blackman, number two. Penny will miss the first. Uh, the road to that first win may seem daunting here right now with this deficit, but you play with that kind of intensity the rest of this game. If every guy on the floor is doing that, it's almost like regardless of the outcome, you can't help but become a better team as you get ready to face that uh, very tough MSUB team coming in here on Saturday night. MSUB in Western Washington today. So a timeout called, 11.54 remaining in this game. We'll keep it right here. Simon Fraser can see it on their faces how much they want this thing and how much they are willing to battle here, but the Seattle Pacific team is just unique enough in the way they're composed to find ways to score, different ways to score too. They uh, were not a three-point shooting team to start this game and all of a sudden in the half-court sets getting that penetration and kick real selfish basketball, moving the ball and those shooters in the corner like Blackman stepping up big and knocking it down. Really huge. And I know basketball fans around the lower mainland of British Columbia may have gotten a chance to head over to the Langley Event Center for my tournament. 
uh, just uh, before Christmas, the Samura Basketball Invitational. And one of the games we played, not as part of that official tournament, but in the same venue during the course of that tournament, was a game between the Semiamu Thunderbirds of Surrey, the number one ranked team at the highest classification in BC, 4A, Semiamu Thunderbirds, the provincial runners-up from a season ago, and they played Eastside Catholic, and that's Sean Blackman's alma mater, and what a game it was, a battle right down to the finish in Eastside Catholic, emerging with the victory, but uh, a nice uh, crowd on hand to see that game, and great to see the best of Washington State, or among the best in the state of Washington, playing the best of British Columbia up here in a great game just before Christmas. We are back to live action, and that is Kashan Roos. Some more back in the game. Lefebvre guarding him straight up. Zaborniak comes with a help. They'll move it right to the basket. They come. Oh, and Lefebvre with the block. The attempted overhand dunk there from Sion Blackman, rejected by Lefebvre. And here's Simon Fraser with the basketball. Rye up to Lefebvre at the top. Penny back up top to Rye. Roos guarding him. Tough turnaround shot, teeters off the back of the iron. Tough break there for Rye, who's finding ways to create open looks for himself in the half court tonight. Zaborniak uh, playing some tough defense here, but he's gonna get called for the foul. Jimmy Z, number wearing number one, coming up the top to head coach Hansen. 16 points the deficit, 11.05 remaining. That is Zaborniak's second of the game, the third team foul here. Right now, it's all about playing basketball the right way for Simon Fraser, the right attitude in this situation, and to carry that forward, possession by possession, what can that do for your basketball team? Because it's a tough uh, Falcons team that's taking the court here at the West Gym. No breaks in the GNAC. There's no uh, no victory that doesn't come without a hard-earned effort. Simon Fraser battling hard here, but Seattle Pacific, uh, a lot of different weapons here today, including Paulson, who's at the free throw line. Zach's going to hit the first one. He's an 88% free throw shooter. And the numbers uh, back up what he's doing from the strike. Here's Zaborniak. Now to Demaculagan. Elliott guarded by Blackman. Shakes him, but some more right there. Oladele. Look at Oladele in the paint. There's that slight feign he gives you with that shoulder in the paint. The defender doesn't know what to do, and it freezes him. And in pure motion, Oladele just puts it on the deck and goes right to the rim for the lay and Great basket from the freshman there, 63 to 47. Oh, and look at Lefebvre's block followed though. Oh my goodness. Doesn't matter what you do, there is a Falcon ready to uh, exact punishment. And right there, it's Ben Baker McCann, the Berkeley junior the junior from Berkeley, California, by way of West Valley College, able to follow with the finish there. 65 to 47, 19 points. Lefebvre with a nice effort there to make it a 17 point game, or a 16 point game make that. Seattle Pacific is Certainly being patient in the half court, looking for their shot. Samore for three. Oh my goodness. Samore again, knocking it down. Kelton Samore now, I believe, with 21 points. Get five points at the half. Damaki Langan stripped of the ball, hits the deck, gets it back, and they're going to call a jump ball, and that's going to stay with. Simon Fraser. So nice hustle there from Demaki Langan. 
Two Falcons in the vicinity. He was outnumbered, but he hit the deck and was able to get, keep possession on the alternating possession arrow. And here comes uh, Trace Evans. Evans out there with Shaw Anderson. Zach Stone in for Simon Fraser. Evans is a tank. That's the kind of uh, body you meet underneath the basket that you kind of just bounce off of. And right there, tries to affect Zaborniak. Look at Jimmy Z working. And look at uh, Blackman getting the ball down the court and Baker McCann rises for the dunk. Ben Baker McCann makes it 70 to 49. That's a 21 point lead. Largest lead of the game, I believe, right now for Seattle Pacific. Here's Penny now to Stone. Zach to Oladele. Jimmy Z on the baseline. Ooh, with a nice job by finding Emmanuel Oladele. He'll knock down the triple from the baseline corner right in front of his own bench. Unfortunately, when you're trailing by 20 and you hit a three, it's like a drop in the ocean, or it feels like it anyway. Here's Evans underneath. Evans underneath using the posterior to create some space for himself there. Evans will rip that one away. Tough break there. Lefebvre underneath had it, just wouldn't go for him. Keeps it at 20. Here's Baker McCann underneath. Pinballed into the hands of Zaborniak. Jimmy Z finding Penny. Back to Jimmy Z. Zaborniak into the paint. Oh, and he's going to get called. One of those nights for Simon Fraser. Nothing going right here. Looks like a timeout on the floor. We'll take a timeout as well. Be back with the final 7.32 of this game from the West Gym. Dear college sports. There's light at the end of the tunnel. A return to normal and all we love about sports. You've instilled resilience, focus, and selflessness in us. We've put those lessons to work. We've found strength and unity in each other. You continue to take us places we never imagined. You bring out the best in us. So when we look forward, we see the light at the end of the tunnel. We see a better world for all of us. And, and for college, college sports. sports. Back with you here at the West Gym. 72-52 the score, 7.32 remaining. We want to check out some great high school basketball action. Two marquee boys tournaments on this weekend. Uh, Friday, a perfect night to go out and see uh, the Chancellor Tournament. The Rich Coulee Chancellor Memorial at St. Thomas More Collegiate in Burnaby as well. The Legal Beagle at Terry Fox Secondary in Port Coquitlam. That being the last coaching stop before arriving at Simon Fraser for current head coach Steve Hansen. And the Ravens uh, hosting some of the top quad A teams in the province. The Chancellor Invitational at St. Thomas More with our good friend Aaron Mitchell. Some of the best triple A teams in the province. It's a great basketball community here in the province of British Columbia. Thanks for joining us for Simon Fraser Seattle Pacific tonight. We get down to 6.49 remaining, rising for the three and knocking it down there. A big job and a big basket there for Sion Blackman. Blackman, uh, I believe, far outstripping his season averages, playing very well tonight. Here's Lefebvre going right to the basket. And I think Evans uh, just caught in, the, caught in the crossfire there. 
I think he's gonna get called for the foul. We'll see as Hussein Wasani indeed calling number 14 for the foul there. So uh, George Lefebvre will step up to the free throw line. Nigel Hilton will check in for the Simon Fraser Red Leafs here the next opportunity. 13 points the deficit is the Vermont transfer, number 34. George Lefebvre. Lefebvre was averaging 24 minutes a game. He's averaging 11 points, 5.8 rebounds, and just under a block a game for this Red Leafs team. As we mentioned, he and uh, Eric Beckett both coming from uh, Vermont. We have not been able to see Eric Beckett other than that uh, brief moments in the Buchanan Cup against UBC early in the season. So all the best to Eric Beckett as he tries to get into this lineup. Certainly the 6'4", 230-pound guard uh, will be a welcome addition if he can get back and healthy with his Simon Fraser team. Shaw Anderson now stepping up to the free throw line. Amazingly, you see how Maui Z wearing number 10 for Seattle Pacific, and he does a great job. The one three-pointer he took was so beautiful, and you look at that ridiculous percentage he brings, and you <laughs> kind of almost knew it was going before he even took the shot. But he doesn't take a lot of them. He's just a guy who gets his team into it in their sets and just brings everybody together and just the really epitomizes the unselfishness uh, that you, you want in your kind of lead guard there. Certainly uh, is an effective player for them. And fun to watch those numbers as you as you chart for games to call. Just stand right out. And there's a beautiful triple. So Oladele knocking down the three ball there to make it a 20 point game. 5.54 remaining in the contest. Asim Hosseini, the official uh, assigning a warning to the Simon Fraser bench. Some vocalizing happening. Next one's a T. They uh, have been warned as we get down to 5.48 remaining. The frustrating moments for everybody involved. You know, you prep and you're starting a homestand here for the weekend and just can't get things going here against this talented Seattle Pacific team. As we mentioned, Falcons coming in with that three and one record. They split in Alaska and won both of their home games last week. And they're ringing in 2023 the way they want for head coach uh, Grant Leap. Little break in the play here. We can thank our crew again. We really appreciate the, op the, uh, the efforts of our producer, Jacob Lazar, and the camera operators, uh, Jenny Balkane and Katie Zagari, and everybody here in the minor officials table as well. The production uh, done here from the moment the school season tips off with football and cross country and all that kind of stuff. Simon Fraser Athletics, what a job they do. Check out athletics.sfu.ca for all the latest information. If you're following on Twitter at SFU underscore athletics, the place to be. Stay involved with everything Red Leafs related. We mentioned uh, basketball upcoming for the men, basketball for the women. Maybe an interesting one, a 4 p.m. tip-off Saturday at Central Washington, but the game being played in Moses Lake, Washington. There's another three ball hoisted. Jim under re, uh, refurbishing there. Here's Jamal Wright coming off the bench. He, he's had to sit for a while and is in the game now and scores a basket there. Simon Fraser trying to diagnose ways to get the stops against this talented Falcons team. There's the entry to Evans. Back up top to Anderson. Shot clock down to eight as we reach the five minute mark remaining. Here's Z. Puts up a shot and it's going to go for him. 
So Maui Z does it himself, 81 to 59. Penny, Lefebvre from the top, he loves to get in rhythm from there, can't get that one to go, and Blackman with a rebound. Evans gets it on a deflection. It's that kind of night for Seattle Pacific. The ball entered off the fingertips. Shaw Anderson couldn't squeeze it. It was meant for him. It deflects right into the hands of Trace Evans, and he's able to score the basketball. That one's going to rattle home for Penny. Penny has been a worker all day. Vic Radichai set the check-in at the next stoppage for Simon Fraser. Four minutes remaining. Vic came in in the first half, and... Found himself a nice shooting opportunity. He squared up and hit the shot and hasn't played a lot here today, but uh, certainly will bring the talent as he comes in. There's Evans. He's going to score at 85 to 61. From 17, Penny can't get it to go. Lefebvre with a tip. Great job in traffic by George Lefebvre. Julian Mora and Kelton Samore will check in at the next stoppage for Seattle Pacific. I believe that'll be Julian Mora's uh, first uh, action today. He's averaging 3.3 points a game. He's appeared in 12 games. No starts there. The Bend, Oregon native, a freshman at 5'11 from Summit High School in Bend, Oregon. And Zach Stone as well will check in. There's Lefebvre again playing some... Jump ball underneath, can't get that one to go. Not Simon Fraser's night here tonight, but a chance to regroup and get ready for MSUB on Saturday. There's Evans. That one coming from down under and finding its way through the rim, 90 to 63. And this one uh, turning into a pretty one-sided affair down the stretch drive here for Simon Fraser. They'll continue to battle. Montana State Billings in for a 7 o'clock game, and it's all going to be part of the annual paper airplane contest night here at the West Gym. Should be a lot of fun. If you can make it out, uh, please do so. If you can't, you can watch us here on Red Leafs TV. Wilson Wong will have the play-by-play -play call at 7 p.m. I have decided to venture out into the high school world Saturday, and have not decided where I'll be, but uh, going to check out some of the younger players in the province of British Columbia as uh, they continue with their high school seasons here in our great province of British Columbia. Some of the numbers to let you know about on the game. And here's the one that uh, really zings home. Seattle Pacific is shooting 60.4% from the field, 32 of 53, as well as 47 0.8% from the three-point line, 11 of 23, and 83.3%, 15 of 18 from the free throw line. You put those three numbers together, and unless you don't play a stitch of defense, uh, a pretty good, uh, pretty good odds that you've got a lead in the basketball game. Those are gaudy numbers. Those are fat ones for Seattle Pacific today. They are playing well here. Simon Fraser shooting 45% from the field, 44% from three-point range, and 87.5% from the free throw range. So those numbers are good too, but the volume to with which Seattle Pacific is bringing their stuff tonight has been enough to build up this big lead here. Simon Fraser, Zach Stone with a nice look. Can't get that one to go. Thirty-second time on the floor. We'll keep it here, but it really is an interesting uh, way to look at this Simon Fraser season. And I brought. I'll get, go to some numbers that we talked about at the very start of the season. <clears throat> the new players this season: Jimmy Zaborniak, Emmanuel Oladele, uh, and Nigel Hilton, as well as the transfers: Eric Beckett. George Lefebvre and Vic Radichai, they're the players that are new to the program this year that are playing. 
And there's a whole ton of others. Tay Christensen, Omar El Chasley, um, uh, Matthews Van Bylant, uh, Tariq Brown, Gio Khan. Guys that came in the same class that are not playing, either sitting out uh, because they've the coaching staff has decided to redshirt them, or in the case of Gio Khan, having to redshirt that year to get eligible to play. There is so much newness to this roster. Simon Fraser, of their 120 starts from last season, player starts, returned only 44 of those. David Penny had 23, and Jamal Wright had 21. They lost 76 of those 120 starts. Julian Roche, Jazz Singh, I mean, you just, so many of those players left. Wilfred Balada, Jordan Lyons. So there is this period of transition that was something they had to face and there was no way no way to get around it and right now that's just what they're facing it's it's a reality of finding the chemistry finding how they best play together and when you do it under fire against the team riding a three-game win streak in this conference there is the possibility that you're going to get nights like this so simon fraser they will remain undaunted they'll get right back to work and they'll get ready for Montana State Billings, and Steve Hansen and his great coaching staff have shown you what they can do here. So we'll see how that works, but boy, there's a tough shot against the zone right there from Roos. Demacke Langen, down to 143 remaining. Radichai is gonna put up the three ball. Stone tries to get a hand in there. Whistle blows. Darren Brulin, the, the official calling it. That foul going called against Julian Mora. Mora's first. Tamaki Langan. Radichai off the window and Vic with two. Radichai prepped obviously uh, in the U.S. system. Spent time at Eastern Washington. But is known locally from his time at McMahon Secondary in Richmond, so good to see him out there right now, number 35. Here's Oladele for three. Emmanuel with a nice look at that one, couldn't get it to go. Here's Mora. Three ball from the corner over the goal. Down to one minute remaining as Oladele brings the ball up the court. Looks underneath for Vic Radichai. And Vic now, I believe, with six points in this game. Finding his looks well there in transition as we're down to 45 seconds remaining. Seattle Pacific, uh, with a victory, would go to 4-1 and one in the conference. Simon Fraser would drop to 0-4. Got three ball. From Baker McCann off the mark. 23 seconds. Here's Demacke Langen. Little runner at the rim is going to be tipped home by Stone. So in the last minute, Simon Fraser getting some opportunities at the rim. And the percentage is up here down to 10 seconds remaining as Mora brings the ball up the floor. And that's going to do it here. Coach Leap, Coach Hansen will shake at half court. That is going to be it for this one. A big win for Seattle Pacific. The Falcons coming up with a 92 to 72, 20 point victory over Simon Fraser here at the West Gym. Simon Fraser dropping now to five and nine overall, 0 and four in the GNAC and three and three at home this season. Seattle Pacific will improve to nine and five overall, four and one in the GNAC and two and three away from the Emerald City. And that'll do it for today. Saturday, 7 o'clock, Wilson Wong here with the play-by-play, -play, Montana State Billings and Simon Fraser. Our thanks to everyone here, our producer Jacob Lazar and everyone that brings Red Leaf basketball to you. Our thanks, and uh, for I'm Howard Smurr, and we'll see you uh, very, very soon here from the West Gym.